Hi. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in my front room. You have a microphone like that in your front room? No, I've obviously bought it in here. <laughs> I'm just going in on a packet of crisps. I'm so fucking hungry. No funny business. No funny business. Right, so Lizzie, aka the albino squid. <laughs> aka Elizabeth. Yes. So, obviously... You're in self-isolation in your studio. Yeah, we have a cup of tea. We have a nice cup of tea. I've actually got a, um, don't judge me, but I'm drinking a porn star martini from a can. I know, I know you like that, really. You wish your, you wish your tea was a porn star martini. <laughs> what have you been doing since all of this has been going on? What's like your typical day? What have you been up to today? Have you got into a routine yet? Well, I'm going to have a routine, but obviously that went down the drain today. So I've started working out in the morning. I was slating someone on my Twitter when I a couple of days ago for doing star jumps in the garden. Yeah, and I said that that was probably me. Hopefully the windows aren't open, but it was one of the neighbours. <laughs> but yeah, I started working out and then like hitting the studio a little bit for a couple of hours, then 12 o'clock start mixing. And it's so good for me right now because I'm getting so much more time. Yeah. So it's benefiting me really. Yeah, so you're being quite strict. Yeah. That's good. That's, I mean, like, I've, like, quite, I've kind of struggled. I think I've settled into a bit more of a routine now. But for the first few days, I was, like, my productivity was, wasn't very good. I just didn't feel like doing anything. I think because everything was, like, a bit of a shock. I was kind of in the mindset of, like, right, am I going to get this disease? And it was taking my mind off music or doing any work but I had a cough like I was so tired all the time like I kept getting hot and cold oh so I just God. I was just bed bound for like a good five days so you yeah. pretend you're potentially a survivor of the virus I don't even know like no one's really come into contact with me so I'm quite good yeah well at least you're feeling better now oh, me the other week you came into what? contact <laughs> yeah oh my god maybe you were carrying it then I feel like we were definitely like sharing drinks and doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Make of that what you will. <laughs> so do you think when all of this is over and we go back to raving, people's attitudes or the general atmosphere in the crowd will be different after all of this? Yeah, I definitely think like the raves will be so much stronger when this is all over. I think people, they'll be like, everyone will just be hyped. Like, I know I'm gonna probably take a lot less for granted just in life in general and also the fact that we're able to do what we do as our jobs we obviously love it and you're doing it week in week out like I'm all, I always feel grateful for it but it does become the norm I think because I'm more of a producer anyway like I love being locked away like and this is so good for me because I get more time to be locked away so do you feel like other than getting in the studio more that so far have being on lockdown essentially do you think it's taught anything about you as a person yeah i think i need to take more time for myself yeah i rush stuff all the time because i'm just like i'm just, well i don't get time to do stuff and now i have got time i'm like i need to make time for myself like i need to make time for the studio like every day a couple of hours mixing every day a couple of hours but i know once this is over i'll just be like <laughs> Like once a week or whatever. it is mad how it is it's almost like an opportunity to reassess the what you spend your energy on in a day or in a week and how much time you're putting here how much time you're putting there what enjoyment you get what would you say your top three tips are top three tips to basically stay sane stay physically healthy mentally healthy whilst we're going through this period of lockdown i think be productive like put hours a day to do something, learn something, listen to drum and bass, listen to my music. <laughs> <laughs> listen to Lizzie. <laughs> yeah, that I like that tip. So talking about your music, let's pretend, let's pretend the catastrophic beginning of 2020 hasn't happened. And just take it back to 2019. What would you say your highlights were? Rampage, meeting you. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> That was quite like a bucket list show though, wasn't it, to do really? I, I watched Rampage like the year before and I was like, this looks sick, like I want to play, I'm going to play this show. I actually said I'm going to play this show and I was like, it's going to happen, like, I'm going to make it happen. 
I didn't do nothing to make it happen. They just hit me up, which is wicked. It just fell into but, your hands. You know, that's like, what is it? Law of attraction or whatever. Working. I mean, we obviously didn't actually know each other before that. You're like my first female drum and bass friend. Really? I think so. I think so, yeah. But I mean, we were obviously... So we linked before the Rampage show yeah. at Ministry of Sound to have a little practice. It wasn't really in the practice though, was it? It was kind of... It <laughs> consisted of Liz putting on a, like a dead mouse helmet that was in the office and play a mixing garage so <laughs> when we did rampage like you obviously went first it was quite were you quite nervous i remember you saying it was quite nerve-wracking nervous like that's like the most nerve-wracking thing isn't it especially because like, i built up like so much um i don't know in the week like i was like oh you know like must know these tunes, blah, 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 like, not getting any sleep, like, I just drove myself into the ground, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, and I wish I hadn't, like, I think I'll, if I'd have taken it easy that week and gone, do you know what, it's cool, like. It's hard though, because you obviously, when you're, when you're given that kind of opportunity, you want to make the most out of having that platform and do the best that you can. It is about, you do have to enjoy it as well. I mean, my best sets normally come as a result of me being very relaxed. Yeah, I think definitely, I agree. Is there any releases that you have planned or in motion? I was going to, well, I am going to self-release one in like the next couple of, well, I say days, is a bit of a delay on it at the moment because of this whole corona shit. Yeah. But hopefully in the next week or so it gets cleared and self release something any plans for a label in the future would you say yeah definitely watch this space <laughs> all right so thinking back i mean how long have you how long have you been playing out now like how long have you been in the game i've been djing what what i don't this is you need to be a bit more specific because this has been going on a long time <laughs> All right, let's say, like, when, when, when would you say, what year do you think it was that you played your first drum and bass set, like, to a crowd in a club? Or to no one in a club? I'm going to say seven or eight. Do you remember what happened before you got to that point? Like, were you a fan, were you a raver before you decided to start mixing yourself? I've always mixed since I was, like, 16. So mm. this is, like... I don't know, like progression, I guess, like getting more and more into it, like buying vinyl, collecting vinyls. And then like, I was on vinyl, then I was on CD. And then all of a sudden the MP3 thing came about with the USB sticks and everyone like was like, oh yeah, you need to get on USB. And then I remember doing it for the first time and I just royally, royally mucked up. Like, yeah. I, just, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, this is new. Like, I'm so used to CD. <gasps> Shaking like, hand, pressing the key button. Like. <laughs> I don't get it I don't get it but you know you, you've got to move with the times you've got to learn things and I learned it and now I'm cool with USB like What's the first like genre that you started going out and raving to was it drum and bass or was it something else um yeah it was drum and bass but I was into hard house as well like okay. I had hard house vinyls which I still got um and then I was like which one do I like more? Like, because I started collecting both and I was just like, I really like Hard House. Like, I started going to like Global Gathering and seeing like Lab 4 and like Lisa Lashes and um, Anne Savage, people like that. And I was just like, that's so cool. Like, I want to be like them. And then I'd go in the other tent and see like Andy C and like, I don't know, Ronnie Size, like all those names. And I'd just be like, no, nah, they're, they're cool, lad. <laughs> I mean, like, I remember going to, like, Helter Skelter and seeing, like, the Nani Shakers being, like, I want to be a Nani Shaker. <laughs> Have you ever had a go at that? I used to dance, yeah. You come back to your room and, like, practice your moves. <laughs> this, this, I think, is quite interesting. So, back, I mean, what year would you say that was, roughly? What, when I used to go global? Yeah. Like, those memories that you're talking about. 2003, 2004. Right, so think back and tell me what it is that you think you were wearing. Well, I know what I'd be wearing at the sanctuary. I'd be wearing like pedal pushes, little yeah. denim pushes. I'd be wearing a little push up bra, like <laughs> cotton neck top, fake ID in my back pocket, hair to the side like this. What with like, a flat with a flower in it? Um, no, but there is pictures of me with a flower in my hair somewhere. Yeah, but I'd have a glow in the dark horn around my neck nice 
you've got classics, that's the kind of stuff I'd be wearing. And what, what were you drinking? Like Bacardi Breezer? Um, no, I didn't really drink at raves. I didn't take drugs and go completely sober all night till like half past six in the morning. And then my dad used to come and pick us up in like a um, like a space wagon thing. They used to call it <laughs> now you know like a Wait second but like a people carrier and used to pick all my friends up like burning their faces off in the background like hearing gunshots at raves <laughs> that is a touch to have a dad that would pick you and your mates up but like 6 a.m from a rave yeah like I owe, well i owe him quite a lot because he used to do a lot more when i was younger Aww. i know that in the last year i've done a lot more traveling than ever before in my life and i quickly made a lot of mistakes with packing, getting through the airport. And I feel like I have learned a lot of, I guess, like travel hacks to um, be the most efficient in this area. What would you say your top three travel hacks are? Roll everything up in your case. Don't fold it. <laughs> okay. Um, remember to bring um, eyelashes. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to our male DJs. Remember your eyelashes. <laughs> your headphone jack and your USB. Mm. That's basically it. I've actually um, got myself a spare headphone jack. Do you know what it is, actually? I, I pretend I did that on purpose, but I lost one, reordered one, and then I found the old one. And I thought, like, you're obviously in your studio at the moment. I want to hear... Um, I mean, whatever you want to show, really, it'll be quite interesting to hear something that you've started throughout this period of self-isolation, just to see where your head's been at. Okay, so I've got two that I started recently, in the, like, last couple of days, and then I've got some that I've been working on. So, let's try one. Let's try one. These are, like, not finished, so this is exclusive. Ready? different vibes I like that though that you've got like a few things that are quite different next next okay so this one um this one is meant to have a vocal over the top okay I did have a vocal over the top obviously we've got a girl singing on it but um the vocal was wrong and now we have to redo it, so I might rewrite it. So wait, so do you do you write the vocal, or do you work I, with writers? No, usually I've got vocalists who who write the to the song. So if mm -hmm. I said they'll write to it, um, but I haven't really worked with a lot. Like um, like Lauren, obviously, like she's been working with me. Like um, she's really good, um, and then. I'm quite picky though, if it doesn't fit, do you know what I mean? So 
some you could send something to someone but if if it doesn't fit it just it just doesn't fit does it mm. um, so i prefer like i prefer to have something like people send me stuff and then i can just like reach for it and then go you know what something like this might work or you know something like that um it just depends on like the person's voice like what key it's in um like if it's from a sample you know like in your reseeing something and someone else has done it like this this is the challenges with working with like a vocal so it just depends but this one is men have a vocal over the top so this is not like how it's men are come out like <laughs> but i like this one this is like classic me sound okay so this one's not finished yet but obviously without a vocalist it sounds a little bit stripped down right it's i like the vibe though i think it's got like it's got that bit of soul it's quite deep I feel like everything I write is quite like he broke up with me. Like, yeah, it's right. like it's the darker side of the spectrum, definitely. I got one more as well. I reckon you. Well, I reckon you might like the other one. Go on, show me, show me, show me. But I put like a clip on my Instagram a little while ago of me starting it. But I just never finished it, and now it's getting a little bit further with this whole isolation thing. So. That's my favourite. Got it's a bit more breaksy, isn't it? <laughs> All that throwback jungle. Yeah. That is my vibe. Love it. I thought so. <laughs> I mean, how long has it been since you released anything? Yeah. 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 So people are people are thirsty for it. <laughs> yeah, but I need to make sure it's right. Like, I don't of want to. Of course. Pain. It's just. And plus it just worked, like people work differently. Like people, I'm not a, like a prolific, uh, how do you say it? Prolific? Prolific? Prolific. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not one of those producers. I don't just fucking chuck shit out. I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I've never been like that. Like I've got stuff sitting on my computer that never saw the light of day. And I still play it out. Do you know what I mean? So um, people don't know I still play it out, but that's the beauty of I'm releasing stuff you can always play it out so it's just timeless isn't it you know for a and all that this is the problem I've had as well it's like for me it's like okay so the first bits of production I put out maybe I'm maybe I feel too deeply about it but I'm also almost a bit like right this is gonna like be my first mark of identity for me as a producer so I'm like feel like I'm being so overcautious about my feelings about it before I do anything with it. Do you know what I mean? That's good though, to be a bit like that. Like, um, I was like really not like that at all. Like I used to just send it to everyone when I first started, like, and I'm glad I did because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been discovered. Do you know what I mean? As a producer. Um, but it depends. It's, everyone's different, you know, like everyone's journey is different and that's what is cool about it. Like, you can find someone who's just coming up now, like, you know, sm absolutely smashing it on their first tune. But maybe like 10 years ago, you know, you had to have a few, you have to have a few EPs underneath your belt, like before you even got recognized, you know what I'm saying? Like it's tough, but everyone's journey is different, which is cool. So that's yeah, that. exactly. Like on that note, well, I mean, a lot of people ask me, I mean, if I'm honest, I've put, I'll put it out there like I will for every person I speak to, um, I've asked everyone what they would want me to ask you. And yeah. nat naturally, I've got like a bunch of questions about what it's like being a female. And I think we, we've spoken about this before. Like, 
I'm not really one for putting too much focus on the whole gender thing. Like, I am aware that I am a minority, but, like, do I want to give it more attention than the product itself? Probably not. Um, But I'm going to ask you one because I've got so many. (laughs) Just call yourself a product. No, I mean, like, the product being the music, regardless of who's made it whether they're a girl or a guy, do you know what I mean? So this is quite relevant to you because, you know, you have, you have been doing it for a while and you've probably seen right from the start up until now the changes in the genre for females. So how is it, would you say, being a female in the scene at the moment within the last year or two compared to, you know, six, seven, eight years ago? crazy like it's mad like there's so many more girls now which is like it's good because yeah no it's good because like you know you need that balance really don't you there's only like a handful of us doing it like what seven years ago whatever you say there's only literally I only knew of a couple growing up as well you know you had like chemistry and storm you know rap you know uh wild child people like that like but um who else I'm just trying to think like it's really quite hard well for me like the first the because I, I started out not just playing drum and bass I was playing like other sort of bass music genres as well but the first female I was aware of was actually B Traits oh yeah 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 and um, when she was um doing sets with like Digital Soundboy I think she had a couple of releases on there I don't think it was drum and bass but I remember hearing a mix that she put out a Digital Soundboy mix and I was like, oh my God. It's like, I knew that there were female DJs, but she was like, oh my God, she's actually playing like this bass heavy music. And it had some drum and bass in it. It had a bit of like 140 stuff. But so that's mad. Like there was obviously, like you said, I struggled to find anyone. And now um, you just got to go on Instagram, you know, go down that rabbit hole of going from one profile to another. And there's like thousands of us. <laughs> so much like we didn't have instagram like you know seven years ago or whatever like maybe it was, i don't know but you know no one was using it like they're using it now like it was just i don't know like a completely different world you know um and then you get people that come into the scene they leave like you get people like that all the time um but you know it's it's who stays who goes you know what i mean definitely Definitely. I mean, I think a lot of people think they have an idea of what it's like. um, And then perhaps you start out and quickly realise what it actually does take. I think that's where a lot of people might realise maybe it's not for them. I think you need to decide on like who you are as well, because, you know, um, you're always like discovering stuff about yourself anyway, like in normal life. Like if you you're an artist what are you like you're a dj you're a producer are you doing both like what like what are you about do you know what i mean like people need to see what you're about so yeah and i think i think the best way to do that is to just be authentically yourself as possible i think the pro- yeah. the when people struggle with that is when they're looking too much at what other people are doing yeah, trying to emulate especially nowadays when you say like you've got instagram you've got like platforms where you can you know look at other people all the time like that's where like I guess people like copycat like people just you know not doing themselves enough like but that's life isn't it I mean that's what makes you different is just this is something I tell myself all the time I'm like I just you just have to strip it back and be like what do I think about this don't listen to what anyone else is thinking you know right so second question from a follower is who would your dream back to back be with? Can't say me, obviously. We've done that, been there, done that. <laughs> but you know what I'm gonna say, right? You know what I'm gonna say. What what yeah, one person? You can have more than one. Bye. Who? Bye. Who? Bye. Bye. <laughs> I thought you were like, bye, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Wait, come back. Who who did you say? Bye. Bye. S- oh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I 
right okay okay yeah i mean i'd have to agree with you on that yes yeah, that's, that's a good answer logistics i'd like to do like a, oh can you imagine like a back-to-back liquid set oh my god i was so like anti going back to back with people like um you know at one point and now i'm like no let's throw it down do you know what i mean so i don't know i think when you have like a successful back-to-back that that you weren't expecting and it's vibes that definitely opened your mind up a bit more to doing it again with other people yeah definitely like we vibe like i'm not gonna lie like me and you vibe like (laughs) but it depends and it it depends on what kind of people you are as well Definitely. So, like, you know, but it's about what styles you play as well. You know, if you complement each other's styles, it's going to work, isn't it? You know, but, I, but saying that, like, me and you don't play the same style. We, no. might, we might dip in and out, but because I think we're on a wave as humans, yeah, as that's humans. why it works. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think, yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it depends. Like, if you vibe, like, on a music level and, you know, or as a person, it just, it really just depends, isn't it? Mm. All right, so third question from a follower. What's your... I could probably answer this on your behalf. What is your favourite genre outside of drum and bass? Spice Girls, really, isn't it? I like... No. no. (laughs) I like grime. Grime music, garage. um, You know, like I say, hard house growing up. So it's all like, it's dance music, isn't it, really? Yeah, I like pop music, Britney, you know. Spice Girls. <laughs> well, no, what, I, what was it that you were playing in the car on the way to Rampage? What? Justin Timberlake. Oh, Paris Hilton. Fucking hell. Look, yeah. I mean, that that was that was that was interesting. Driving through Belgium, going to play Rampage, listening to Paris Hilton. <laughs> He's real. Not, do you know what my phone's popping off of this house party thing? He's, you well, about- yeah, but you're with me now. you this is our house party, all right? <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a quick fire question round with you. Um, so you just need to answer the question. Don't think too hard. Just give me an answer, all right? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. First up, Pioneer Mixer or Alan and Heath? Pioneer. How many decks? Two. What's three. your what's your favourite UK city? London. Favourite non UK city? Ooh, I don't know. I really don't know that one. Okay, let's say uh, your favourite city in Europe. Um, Paris. Paris. Okay. Um, what's your favourite? drum and bass track right now my own drum and bass tracks okay your favorite drum and bass artist at the moment um <laughs> myself myself okay <laughs> winter or summer uh winter festivals or clubs clubs nike or adidas both no I don't, yeah, but I will pick both. one. Pick one right now. Nike Adidas. Nike Adidas. Nike Adidas. Yes. Uh, did you say Nadidas? Adidas. Adidas. <laughs> what is <laughs> Adidas? All right. Cats or dogs? Cats. Baths or showers? Showers. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Voice notes or texts? Texts. What's your most used emoji? Laughing face. Every, uh, everyone's going to say that. Money or time? Time. What series are you watching at the moment? Oh my God. So I started watching The Boys on Netflix. Okay. The Boys on Netflix. Yeah. It's like a superheroes thing. It's okay. not what it is. Okay. Okay. Right. Trains or planes? Planes. Baseman or trigger? You can't ask me that. <laughs> All right. What's a shrew? A little mouse. (laughs) Shrews or rats? Shrews. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Right, so just to finish off, I'm going to be playing this game with everyone. Yeah.
Is that the one? Yeah, by? By company? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> By sport. Aztec fucking sport. Right. I have that on fucking vinyl. How can I get I know. Me- it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Right. Let me play another one. You'll know this one, I, I think. Huh? Killers don't die hazard. Right, what about this one? Ready? Rollers, Shaolin technique. You got it, girl. <laughs> right, so I'll let you get on. Thank you for joining. Oh, bring my microphone back. Right, so thank you to my Albino Squid for joining us live from her studio. And um, yeah, I'll look out for the uh, music that you've got coming in a few weeks, you say? Uh-huh. Well, we'll see because of all this quarantine stuff. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Safe. All right then. Well, I'll see you later. Bye cheese. Bye. <laughs>